Hi everyone and welcome to A Discovery of Riches, Five Steps to Starting a Salesforce Journey. I'm Tuck Ahmed and thank you firstly so much to London's Calling for giving me this opportunity and also to our sponsors. So thank you very much. And, and I guess also thank you for everybody that's joined. Um, thank you so much. Um, just a little bit of uh, background on myself. Um, I am day-to-day, uh, -day, I am a, a Salesforce functional consultant, and I've been doing that role now uh, with Capgemini for nine years. Um, I've been using Salesforce for about 15 years. So um, prior to joining Capgemini, um, I worked for a company that... Um, I helped implement Salesforce um, and I actually became the Salesforce administrator for that company. So are we ready, set to discover? So basically I'm going to give you a five-step guide on some key areas that you might need to consider when you are kind of starting a Salesforce journey. Now, um, this is kind of positioned today primarily as a consultant going into a business, um, but um, it also actually applies if you are a, a business as well. So, you know, all this content hopefully will be useful for a business or an end user that's looking to implement Salesforce um, in the near future. Um, usually this type of discovery is around four to six weeks if we are looking at a, a kind of standard sales or service cloud implementation. So as you can see there, we've got our uh, treasure chest uh, and at the moment it's closed. So the aim of um, today is to basically open up our treasure chest and what we're going to do is add our riches to that treasure chest. And you can see the riches just at the bottom of the screen there, and those are the steps that I'm going to take you on. And also, please look out for um, some extra riches. Uh, so after each step, I'll be sharing with you some extra insights, and these are actually some actual real-life lessons learned uh, that I've picked up um, in the various discovery sessions that I've run in the last few years. So step one is the key to opening a discovery. So the first point is a little bit obvious, but what you really need to have is the correct discovery team in place before you actually go on your discovery journey. And what's quite crucial here is there are some critical roles or skills that you would need to fulfill. So make sure that um, you have some architectural governance, make sure that there is a functional uh, consultant, uh, somebody that can cover the technical side, uh, and also um, consider a project manager as well that will kind of be able to, um, you know, stakeholder manage and kind of bring it all together. Now, it doesn't necessarily all have to um, come from one person. Um, it could be um, that you get the, that skill set from a few different people, and um, the people that are involved in the discovery don't have to be there for the entire duration either. But think about having those skill sets because they'll really help to shape your discovery. So, just kind of moving on to actually opening a discovery and you can see our treasure chest has been opened with our key. Um, what is really crucial um, is to really find out um, the context of the business that you're doing the discovery for. So you want to really analyze some of the key drivers for the business, any kind of initial areas of concern, uh, make sure that, kind, that they are kind of communicated also, um, you need to have a little bit of knowledge around how this business looks to be um, wanting to um, implement Salesforce. So, you know, is it a sales cloud? 
implementation? Is it service cloud? Is, is it both? Um, so make sure that you have this pre-conversation. So before opening a discovery, ensure that you have a pre-conversation and the context has been set. The other thing that is really important is um, having the correct audience. So have the correct people in the room and make sure that they know why they are there, essentially. So what I've done in the past is really think about maybe having a briefing session um, and the briefing session will basically set the scene and the goals so that everybody knows roles and responsibilities, why they're there and what value they're actually going to be adding as part of this discovery journey. Um, and the last point on there as well, from a business perspective, really important to have a project sponsor. Now the project sponsor is the person that's really gonna champion the discovery and they usually work with, with a project manager as well to ensure that everybody you know, is on board and they're almost like the captain of the ship. So project sponsor, very, very important. My extra riches point for this step is um, I was once involved in a um, kind of uh, first um, workshop for a discovery uh, where unfortunately both of um, these incidences happened in the same session. So there was one participant that had no idea why they were at, at this workshop. So they didn't even know what Salesforce was. Um, and then there was another uh, person uh, who unfortunately uh, was covering for somebody that was absent um, and um, you know, they weren't brought up to speed either. So again, this goes back to have the pre-conversation, ensure the context is set and you have the correct audience in the room. So just moving on to step two. Step two is all about what is the current state of play? So this is really about understanding the now. So what you want to do is really find out what the business is currently doing. Now, that is normally defined as an as-is process and make sure you kind of map out the as-is process in a visual way, um, you know, whiteboards, et cetera, post-it notes, um, really good to kind of map it out in a visual way. And as you're kind of going through the as-is process, what will hopefully happen is that you'll get a lot of pain points and it's really good to then map the pain points alongside the process as well and it really helps you know and as this process really helps to identify the pain points as well the other thing um, particularly for a functional consultant what it will help you to do is you'll start to drive out some of these high level requirements as you go through the pain points so somebody might say it takes me seven clicks to do this this job um, you know, or there's a lot of, you know, email noise. Um, I have to send 10 emails uh, before I actually get approval um, for this, this particular item. So things like that, those are your high level requirements. And those will kind of come, um, you know, from the ASIS process and also the pain points. And the last point on there is always ask why. Um, you just need to question the ASIS process and question the, the pain points as well. So, you know, why, are, why is it done that way? You know, why is that, why is that really a pain point for you? And from my experience, basically, if you ask the question why and the response is because we've always done it this way, you know then that there is definitely room for change. Uh, because if that is the kind of standard response, which I've had many times over the years, you know that you've got quite a lot to play with there and hopefully an appetite for change. My extra riches point uh, for this step is um, during an as is and pain points um, workshop, um, we did, I did once spend over an hour on one particular pain point with, with one user. Now, there was um, 
quite a few people involved in that workshop. So what I would advise in hindsight is try to park the longer conversations and take them up offline um, and maybe on a one-to-one -one, um, kind of uh, basis. So, so acknowledge it, note it down, but perhaps don't spend too long on every single pain point because then you know it's not great for time management. My step three is get your Sherlock Holmes on. Now, step three is actually, um, I have to admit, my favorite part of the entire process. And this for me really is investigate, investigate and investigate. So once you've done an as is process and you've gathered those pain points, what you really need to do is go under the bonnet and um, what I found useful is to really understand the scope and sit down with some key users. And I've defined it here as key user interviews. But what I mean by that is sit down with, with the person that is actually doing the as is process that has got the pain points and actually see in real time. And it will really help to bring the as is and the pain points to, to life. And I've done this um, lots of times in, in previous engagements where I spent half a day or sometimes just a couple of hours with a key user um, and, you know, sat next to them and um, really understood their, so to speak, their pain. Um, and what also is quite key here as well is sometimes when you talk about an Aziz process and when you talk about pain points, um, to be honest, sometimes just talking about them doesn't do them justice. Uh, and in reality, what you might find is when you sit down with, with a key user, um, it could actually be a lot more severe than what was actually articulated um, in like an as is process session. So definitely investigate, sit down with the key users. A couple of other points on, on this step is, is that it actually helps you to get a, start to build a bit of an understanding around also what types of users that are using Salesforce. So when you sit down with people, you start to understand the kind of team makeup as well. And, you know, how many people are on the team, um, how many managers, etc. And you start to bring uh, build up a little bit of a picture around what users might be required. The other thing that you'll hopefully uncover as well is, is that you'll be able to kind of see um, what types of training that you might need. So, you know, are the people quite savvy to the systems um, or if it's a larger company, would there be some kind of larger change management piece that, that might have to be done? My extra riches point um, for this step is, um, I once sat down a couple of years ago, I once sat down with, with a key user and I spent about half a day um, with them and they took me through, you know, um, basically um, a, a process around um, sales approval, basically. Um, and the funny thing was, was that the previous day, we'd kind of discussed with their manager, um, the ASIS process and also um, a few pain points. And then the next day I sat down with, with, with the key user. Now, it turned out that the process that the end user was actually doing was completely different to the Aziz process that was articulated the day before. Um, and when I kind of questioned it, uh, they were like, oh, yes, yeah, that is the Aziz process, but we found a way to bypass it. Um, so, you know, there the investigation really paid off. Um, and we had to go back to the business and say, you do know that your Aziz process isn't followed. So we had to kind of tweak, tweak the Aziz process. So yes, definitely investigation did, did pay off. Step four um, is what about my weekly report? And what step four is really about um, is all about data. Now, it's really important, I think, to talk about data in its own session. Um, because when you start talking about data, uh, what it will do is it will kind of help you uncover, um, you know, where um, 
data will sit in Salesforce, where it will come from and where it needs to go to. Um, it will also kind of uncover any kind of um, data quality issues that um, the business might be having. And also generally it will help you um, formulate those reporting requirements. Um, so it's really important, I feel, to talk about data on its own. Um, and also um, it's good to have those conversations about is there going to be historical data that might need to be loaded into Salesforce? Um, is there any data migration? Um, and also, are there any integrations that, that need to be done? So, you know, does, will Salesforce have to pull some data from a system or maybe they'll have to um, send data from Salesforce to an external system? So really important to kind of talk about data because it will help kind of, um, you know, bring out integration and also those will then obviously be your kind of dependencies um, that, that, that you might need. The other point around data um, is visibility of data. So when you talk about data and reporting, hopefully you'll start to get a picture around sharing and security. So um, what I'm referring to here is the role hierarchy in, in Salesforce. So hopefully you'll be able to start building a picture that, you know, this team needs access to this bit of data, but um, they potentially won't, you know, need access to a, a, another part of uh, the data in the system. My extra riches point uh, for this one is um, I was once um, also involved in, in, in a discovery where unfortunately um, in um, the main bulk of the discovery, um, the reporting team who were kind of defined by the business uh, with that name, they weren't ever really involved in the discovery. And unfortunately requirements were kind of missed and um, they were kind of a key um, group of users that provided um, uh, some data to an external kind of HR system. Um, and yeah, it, it, they fortunately the requirements did come in once we went into implementation, but at a very late stage. So it's really important that I feel that you talk about data separately. Step five is it's playback time. So as you can see, our chest is now full of um, the riches uh, that, that we've gained along our journey. Now, step five is all really about showcasing the, the journey. So what's really important is that you play back to the business, the kind of story of the discovery. So you need to kind of start off with, you know, this, this is your as is, these are your pain points, but then you want to quickly turn the story into, but look what it could be. This could be to be, um, you know, this is what your good could kind of look like. And you can do that with a to be process. The other way to do that as well is something called a high level roadmap, which, which I've used previously in, in discoveries. And what the high level roadmap, what I'm really referring to here is, is that hopefully during this, um, these steps, you've kind of gathered some high level requirements uh, during the way. Um, now, what's sometimes um, not great is to kind of just show a whole load of requirements on screen, right? What you want to do is kind of categorize them, maybe similar to, um, you know, epics um, that you would kind of use in an agile methodology. So kind of, um, bucket them up into kind of groups and kind of show them in a roadmap and it will make it a lot more visual for, for, the, uh, for the business. So really good to show a 2B, show this kind of high level roadmap. The other thing that is so important in, in, in this step is how to articulate like the initial solution and what I've, what I've defined here as proof of concept. So proof of concept is going to bring to life some of those key requirements. So it's essentially going to be a short demo of Salesforce. 
And what you want to do is select two or three really key requirements that you know will be quick wins and you know that are going to add value back to the business and kind of prepare those in a short demo uh, to kind of play back and it will really help to bring to life the 2B process and also the requirements and the high level roadmap. Um, things to kind of consider for this proof of concept and kind of demo is pick items such as automation, quick actions, approval processes, and then you want to tie in with the added um, business value around, you know, this is where you had seven or eight clicks and look with Salesforce, you're able to reduce it to just one or two clicks to increase productivity. And what else you want to do is don't show absolutely everything because you want to kind of leave them wanting more. So it should just be a taster of what the what good, what a future good can look like. Um, and the last point on this is around estimated costs. Now, for any project managers that are on the session today, you'll probably say we could have a whole session just around estimated cost. But I think it is important. Most companies will want some kind of indicative cost, um, but it's good to factor in, um, you know, licenses and an implementation cost and maybe look to do it in phases and potentially you could um, kind of align that with your requirements roadmap as well. So quite good to talk about cost in, in this session as well. My extra riches point for um, this step is, um, and now this wasn't actually a session uh, that I was directly involved in, but it was one that I witnessed. So I once was part, um, witnessed a playback session where unfortunately in the actual proof of concept and demo, the playback was far too tech focused. Um, and I know that the audience that potentially we've got today uh, we would love to know about process builders and um, flow within Salesforce. But unfortunately, you need to position your um, proof of concept and, and demo to the right audience. So nobody's going to want too much detail about how Salesforce works. It's Remember, it's more about what it can do for the business and how it's going to add value to the business. So definitely um, keep that in mind. So in summary, all the riches have now been discovered. Um, and I'll just kind of take you through um, the points that I've talked about today. Um, so always remember um, to have the correct audience and context is absolutely key. Make sure to understand the now, always investigate, and investigate, as you know, I'm very passionate about investigating under the bonnet, make sure to investigate. Think about having that separate session um, around data and sharing. Um, it's really important uh, we kind of understand any integration and dependencies. Also, play back clearly. Make sure you have the right context and the right audience um, and play back to um, that audience as well in, in the correct way, um, ensuring that you're talking about how Salesforce um, will improve um, their business and how it's gonna add value. So today, as you can see, we've now got that full treasure chest of all the riches we've discovered today. So hopefully, you're going to be a lot more prepared to start your Salesforce journey. And also don't forget about those extra riches as well. Um, always note down lessons learned as they're just going to come in handy for future work. So when you do you know, a particular thing uh, with, with um, your next engagement, they'll just help you to kind of gain extra riches along the way. So lessons learned are always important to um, note down as well. So I just want to thank everybody for uh, listening today.
I really wish that if you're starting your Salesforce journey, it is a discovery of riches for you. I've been Tak Ahmed. Thank you for listening. Thank you to London's Calling and to all of our sponsors today. And I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Thank you.